Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in today's first video. We're doing the ECMDF 30 day look ahead for the UK and for the rest of Europe as well for today's uh, first video. So we're looking at temperature and precipitation anomalies for the next four weeks, taking us well into May from the uh, ECMWF long range model. Uh, we're at the Hungarian Met Office for this, so big thank you to them for supplying the uh, charts. Um, and you just can't show you mean sea level pressure or 500 millibar heights, uh, but you can get a broad idea of what the pattern is. Is, uh, is doing from the temperature and precipitation anomalies. The second video up, to, up, to, uh, up later on this afternoon will be week's 10-day video update. That's going to be on the homepage as always. So starting off with um, our week one temperature anomaly, week one for the forecast period, week, week uh, 18 for, uh, the, for the year, for 2019. Uh, we see some quite a cold scene actually across many parts of uh, Europe in the weekend, certainly much cooler than average. The central parts of Europe coming out with an anomaly of around three to six degrees below average and more widely across many sort of northern parts of Europe, we're talking about temperature anomalies of around a degree to three degrees uh, below average. Exceptions are down across Spain and Portugal. Looks much warmer than average there. So if you're off to uh, uh, Spain or Portugal for uh, a holiday, looks okay there. Temperature anomalies are significantly above average. And also in this far southeastern corner around the Black Sea, going down towards Greece and Turkey. It's a little bit warmer down there. But otherwise, it's really quite a cold scene uh, across many parts of Europe. Southern parts of Norway and Scandinavia also coming out with... Uh, southern parts of Norway and Sweden also coming out with a little bit of an above average temperature anomaly. But really, it's quite a cold scene. Certainly uh, cooler than average across most parts of Europe. The UK and Ireland being forecast to be around 1 to 3 degrees below average. Uh, Precipitation-wise, from the 29th of April to the uh, 5th of May, uh, week one per hour forecast period. Uh, again, we see that most western parts of Europe are coming out drier than average. So in the northwest, it looks pretty dry. UK, Ireland... Many parts of Scandinavia, low countries, much of northwest Germany, down to France, down to Spain and Portugal, substantially drier than average for those regions. In the east and the southeast of Europe, it's a wetter scene, so from Italy over the Adriatic in towards the Balkans in particular, looks very wet there, and then going northwards into southern parts of Poland and also Ukraine, for example. It looks above average with uh, with the precipitation anomaly there. The extreme southeast of Europe, covering the Black Sea down towards uh, Turkey, looks a little bit drier up there. Going further north, so we find that Scandinavia, uh, a bit of a mixed bag, really. Southern parts of Norway looks very dry, but central and northern uh, Norway actually looks quite wet. So it does vary uh, from area to area across Scandinavia, but generally the north and west is drier. The southeast of Europe and the east uh, looks rather wetter in the week ahead. Moving through to week 19, which of course is going to be uh, week 2 for our forecast period. It takes us from the 6th through to the uh, 12th of May. Still looking quite chilly actually across most parts of Europe. This looks like it'll be showing it to be quite a cold first half to May uh, actually. So temperature anomalies are uh, below average in most parts of the Europe. Uh, the coldest anomaly to average or the coolest anomaly to average by this week uh, is uh, down across parts of Italy and then again over the Adriatic in towards the Balkans going northwards to places like uh, Hungary. We see the temperature anomaly there 3 to 6 degrees below average but you see widely across much of Europe we're talking about 1 to 3 degrees below average that covers much of uh, Scandinavia for example I mean into central parts of Europe so again France, Germany, low countries, Poland all those sort of areas coming out uh, slightly below average. Uh, still looking quite warm though across Spain and Portugal. Temperature anomalies there are still holding up at around 1 to 3 degrees above average. So the UK and Ireland, we go more towards average, so it's not quite as cold uh, in this week for uh, Ireland and the UK. Closer to average, but if anything, probably still a little bit on the below average side. Precipitation anomalies uh, from the 6th to the 12th of May looked quite dry down across the southwestern corner of Europe. So uh, much of southern France into Spain, Portugal, drier than average there. In the east of Europe, 
um, it's been above average with precipitation, otherwise just very, very close to average uh, in this week. And then move through to uh, week three, week 20 for the year. And quite a big change is taking us from the 13th through to the 19th of May. We find that for the north and the northeast of Europe, it's going warmer than average. So it's starting to warm up now across Scandinavia. Uh, and particularly going over the uh, Baltic Sea in towards those northeastern states of Europe and then in towards western parts of uh, Russia running down towards the Black Sea. It looks generally uh, warmer than average there. Still some cold temperature anomalies left through this central basin of the Mediterranean, so it looks pretty chilly, uh, kind of like from uh, Corsica, Sardinia, those sort of areas going over towards Italy, I mean down towards Greece, it's a bit colder than average uh, through there. Spain, Portugal, still uh, milder, warmer than average there. And then elsewhere, close to average temperature anomalies uh, for this week, 13th to the 19th of, uh, of May. For Ireland and the UK, much of France also included uh, Germany, Belgium, Holland, um, coming out close to average with temperature anomalies through those regions. Uh, and we're seeing this weakening for precipitation as well, but it still looks quite dry down across this southwestern uh, corner of Europe. So, again, southern France, down Spain, Portugal, through the central basin of the Mediterranean. It is looking uh, rather drier than average there. Otherwise, we're losing the signal. The signal is going away as we are heading further and further out with the model. So, it's showing average precipitation, but I think basically by this point, it is starting to lose the uh, signal quite a bit and then we move through to week four which takes us from the 20th uh, through to 26th of may and now it's a much warmer scene across uh, many parts of europe so a real month of two halves this may if the ecm is right the first half looking really quite cold across most parts of europe certainly much cooler than average the second half though turning warmer than average so now we see widely right from the west of europe from ireland uk france spain portugal all the way over to western uh russian border with um europe and all places in between generally going a little bit above average around one to three degrees above average which for week four is quite a strong signal actually bear in mind as these uh, models go further out, normally the signal gets weaker and weaker. So for week four, temperature anomaly, that is a pretty strong signal for a much warmer scene across uh, many parts of Europe. Precipitation-wise, also reasonably strong scene for things to be a strong signal for things to be going drier. So, uh, I mean, it is quite a week scene. It's week four, but nevertheless, we see that for Scandinavia and then going down into the central western parts of Europe, generally we're average to a little bit drier than average, which for week four is a reasonably strong signal. This southeastern corner perhaps looking a little bit more unsettled. So it appears that as we go into the second half of May, after a cold start to the month, temperature starts to become, we probably get some sort of a ridge building, I would have thought, across central parts of Europe, which brings up the wind from a southerly direction. And uh, that's going to lift the temperature up, but also drive things out quite a bit. So a classic month of two halves being forecast by the ECMWF 30-day uh, model for... Uh, for Europe in the uh, next month. First half looking really quite chilly, certainly much cooler than average, um, but not overly unsettled. That's something else that's coming through. It's quite a dry May that's been seen. So not particularly unsettled, but cool in the first half of the month. Then the second half of the month, still dry, but turning a lot warmer. We shall see all these long range models. Any forecast beyond sort of five, seven days is going to be prone to error, so it's highly experimental. It could all look very different next week, but that's how it's looking uh, this week anyway. We'll be back later on this afternoon with your uh, week's 10-day video update. That's going to be coming up on the homepage at gazzombies.com, and uh, it'll be talking about the chance of really quite a potent cold snap, which we have covered on, of course, with this update. Uh, really quite a potent cold snap coming up for the end of the week and into the bank holiday weekend. Right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.